In our last study, we saw the importance of words and taming our tongue in Christ by the power of his spirit within us. Now today we're going to continue looking at the power of our words and how the enemy uses our ignorance of this power to cause us to sabotage ourselves through the words that we speak. Let's get started. Mm -hmm. Branch. I'm Jim, and today we are continuing to look at the power of words, because many of us do not consider our words to carry that much power. But as we're going to see in the scriptures today, our words are incredibly powerful, even carrying the very power of life and death. Among the various things that we deem important in daily life, our words usually don't rank highly on that list. Naturally, if we're giving a speech or if we're in a meeting with a CEO at our job, we give attention to what we say. But casually, when we're alone, we don't really think about the power of words that often. However, the scriptures aren't shy about detailing the incredible power of words, even to life or death. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, the scriptures record that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it will eat its fruit. Now that's a very interesting phrase. The tongue holds the power of life and death. Have you ever stop to think about that? Do you consider that your words carry that kind of power? This verse isn't just referring to words spoken in public, but personally and privately as well. And furthermore, the tongue can also take on the metaphorical meaning of the internal conversations that each of us has in our mind from moment to moment. We often reason to ourselves. We often say words mentally to ourselves. And those carry just as much power as the words that we speak verbally. In the verse, we also see that those that love it, that being the tongue, those that love it will eat its fruit which might be a bit hard to understand at first, but the basic idea is that those who love have affection for their words will eat the results of those words. This can be a blessing or a warning, depending on whether we are speaking life or death. There are those who truly love to speak death, and it has become a deadly habit for them. You might even have met someone like that before. Someone who always manages to highlight the negative. Now the reverse is also true with those who have a proclivity towards always seeing the positive. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, along with the previous verse, verse 20, mentioned that a person's stomach will be filled by the fruit of their mouth. Again, driving home the point that whether you speak life or speak death, that is what you will feed on. So the scriptures instruct us to respect the power of our words, because we will be eating the results of what we say. Now you might wonder how this factors in with the whole idea of faith and belief. But your words are actions. Your words are actions showing what you believe. The world tries to tell us that we will be satisfied by our hard work, our blood, our sweat, our tears. But the scriptures tell us 
that the real catalyst for satisfaction are actually the words that we speak. But why? Well, as many of us know, the very first creative action in the scripture was God creating everything in the beginning of the book of Genesis. But notice how he created. He created everything by speaking. Now, God could have created everything using any method or means that he wanted to, but he chose to use words. And I believe he chose to use words as a demonstration, as an example. Now, likewise, we are made in his image, and we have a similar ability. As we read last time in our previous study in James chapter 3, the entire course of our life is tied to our tongue, and speaking is an action which reveals what we truly believe, as mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore we speak. So in a real way, our speaking is an action of belief, with creative power given to us by God. And this this, my friend, is where the self-sabotage can come into play. See, we often take the enemy's traps, we fall into the enemy's tricks, and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Because although many Christians today are unaware of the power of their words, the enemy is all too cognizant of them. And he uses our ignorance to great effect. We see examples of the devil's devices as early as Genesis chapter 3, where the serpent deceived Eve, but he did so in an intriguing way. As you read through the account in verses 1 through 5, you'll notice that the serpent subtly alters the name of God. You see, after God created man, in the garden. His title changed from simply God to Lord God, which signified his covenant that he had with mankind, his relationship with us. And the devil removed that covenant name. When the serpent is talking to Eve, he does not use the covenant title. He simply says, did God say, not Lord God, but just God. You see, the serpent removes the Lord. And as Eve is conversing with the serpent, she becomes more and more confused and starts adopting the serpent's language even to the point where she misquotes God's instructions, mentioning that they are not allowed to eat or touch the fruit of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil, something that God never said to them. He never said they couldn't touch it, only that they couldn't eat of it. So we see in real time, as we're reading through the story, Eve becoming more and more confused adopting the serpent's language, becoming confused about instructions, you see the entire thing fall apart right as you are reading the story. And the devil still uses the exact same tactics against Christians today. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Jesus says, Take no thought, when he says, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more important than food and the body more than clothing? But how can we do what Jesus advises us to do? How do we 
take a thought? How do we not take a thought? Have you ever thought about that? It's a, it's a good question. Look at verse 31. Jesus says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Where shall we be clothed? Do you see it? Jesus says, take no thought, saying. Take no thought, saying these things. Don't repeat the devil's words of doubt fear, and defeat. You see, many thoughts go through our mind from day to day, moment to moment. You cannot stop every single thought that comes in, and not every single thought that comes through your mind is from you. It could be from something you heard, something that was on TV, it could be something you read online, could be something directly from the enemy, from evil forces. You cannot stop every single thought that comes through your mind, but you have a choice of whether to take that thought or not. You can accept or reject any thought that goes through your mind. And Jesus here tells us exactly how to do that. Take no thought, saying. See, the devil tries to get us to use our powerful words to sabotage ourselves through our own ignorance. But now that we've exposed this trap, we can be better informed about how to avoid this dangerous ploy. So I encourage you today, stay focused on Christ. And remember the love and the care that God has for you. Jesus detailed it right here in what we read in Matthew chapter 6. See, your words carry great power. Use them to edify yourself and others in the truth of Christ. Don't take the enemy's worrisome thoughts by repeating his negative language. Stay focused on Christ, and I look forward to thriving with you again. Be blessed.